Welcome to Skillcap's guide to the very best settings you should be using in League of Legends for Season 11. We've listed 21 of the most optimal settings that we're shocked most players aren't currently using. We guarantee there'll be many featured in this guide that you aren't currently using, and you'll be kicking yourselves for not using them sooner. So let's go ahead and ditch those iron settings and replace them with what the absolute best players use in League of Legends. Our first tip is a big one, which will significantly help you dodge skill shots. This is a setting done outside of the game. For those of you with NVIDIA graphic cards, right click on your desktop and click NVIDIA control panel. Then go to adjust desktop color settings. Then turn up digital vibrance up to at least 75%, which is going to, well, increase the vibrance of the colors on screen to stand out more. It will make a massive difference when it comes to seeing skill shots that blend into the ground or in hard to see areas. If you feel like you're being hit often by skill shots that you aren't seeing in time, then you definitely need to test this out for yourself as it will increase your awareness by a substantial margin. Along with digital vibrance, you will still want to look into colorblind mode. You don't have to be colorblind to get big benefits from enabling this. This is because it can make health bars, champions, and abilities stand out a lot more against the map in general. This will come down to personal preference for whether you'll want to use it. It's around 50-50 whether high elo players run colorblind mode or not, and just depends on what you find easier to see. That being said, it definitely makes certain abilities much easier to see, like Lux Q, making it a lot easier to dodge than before. When it comes to video settings, one of the most common questions players have is what they should set their video quality as. Generally, the more FPS you're getting, then the smoother everything will feel, so you're going to want to turn your quality settings as low as possible to maximize your FPS. This is simply because the more frames that are displayed per second, then the more up to date you are with what's actually happening in the game. Basically, you might be able to see an enemy casting an ability sooner than if you had lower FPS. This is only partially true though, and stems from the relationship between both your FPS and your monitor's refresh rate. Your monitor's refresh rate is the number of times your monitor updates with new images each second. So a standard 60Hz monitor simply means that it refreshes 60 times per second. Simply put, let's imagine the following. Say you got a great PC that runs League on 400 FPS, but you cheaped out on a 60Hz monitor you would only be able to see 60 of those frames since that's the limit of your monitor. The inverse is also true. If you have a 144 Hz monitor but can only run League on 60 FPS, then you only get to see 60 of those frames. At the end of the day, you want both to be as high as possible. Lower your settings as much as possible in the game itself to maximize your FPS and try to invest in a good monitor if you haven't already. Lastly, there is a very common problem a lot of players face in regards to this though. A lot of people spend their money for a great monitor, but they never actually enable them to go above 60 FPS, which is a complete waste. Unfortunately, your monitor doesn't immediately work at maximum performance when plugged in. You have to click on your desktop and go into display settings. Then scroll down to advanced display settings, choose the correct monitor up top, and then click on display adapter properties. Once there, choose the monitor you want and actually change the refresh rate if you haven't already. This is a very common mistake a lot of people make. In fact, one of our own analysts bought a $500 monitor only to sit at 60 FPS the whole time anyways, simply because he didn't know that this was a thing he had to do. For this tip, it's one of our favorites, but doesn't actually work on the current patch. Rest assured, Mark Yetter, the lead game designer, recently stated he's on the case, so it shouldn't be long now. Here's how it works. This is a setting for those of you who have ever bought Hourglass, headed on over to a team fight, only to have it gone to a bind you weren't expecting, causing you to die like a fool. You can set up predetermined keybinds and settings so that when you buy an on-use item, it'll automatically be placed onto the bind you want it on. You don't have to remember anything. To do this, go into Collections, then Items, click on New Item Set, and here you can add items you frequently purchase, then mouse over them to set their preferred keybind. Now when you're in game, they will automatically go onto your preferred slot, never to be misclicked again. Our next tip is for how to attack move like a pro. With this tip, you'll be able to attack move like Reckless and increase your chances of getting snapped up by Fnatic. Many players know how to attack move, which is to press A and click on the ground near your target. This helps you to auto attack your opponent while kiting without having to accurately click on them with your mouse. This is a solution players use to avoid the ever so frustrating mistake of walking back into their opponent while attack move kiting. The problem with this is that it functions as an attack and move command. Its function is to attack the nearest targets in the direction you're moving towards. This can cause awkward moments like hitting tanks that are in front of you when you don't want to, or hitting minions in between you and your opponent in lane when you're trying to trade. So you want to go to your settings, then game, then select attack move on cursor. 
This changes how your attack move works. Instead of attacking everything in the direction you've clicked towards, it'll now attack whatever is closest to your cursor when you attack move. This allows you to use attack move like the pros do, with precision, instead of just attacking the nearest hostile, which can cause countless problems. Speaking of attacking champions, the next setting we have is for those of you who have tried to execute a tower dive only to constantly keep clicking the tower while trying to hit the enemy champion, only to be rewarded with a few sleepless nights. To remedy this, you'll want to use the attack champions only keybind. It allows you to right click without attacking the target area unless it's an enemy champion. This is perfect for clean tower dives, but more than that, it can also allow you to move into areas of the jungle you otherwise wouldn't, which can set up some nice plays and works very well on champions like Yasuo, who needs precise angles to slide through walls. Without target champions only, he'd simply aggro the raptor camps, but when using it, he can position accordingly. To set this up, go to keybinds in your settings, scroll down to abilities and summoner spells, and then create a keybind for attack champions only. Now when you hold down this keybind, your clicks will only attack enemy champions and nothing else. The main downside with this is that it's difficult to hold down another bind while focusing on other stuff, especially in tense moments like tower dives. Thankfully, there's a solution for this. Go to the game tab in your settings and select treat target champions only as a toggle. Now let's say you've set your attack champions only as X. You can press X once it will toggle the setting on and you'll only attack enemy champions. Then when you press it again, it'll go back to normal. Our next setting is for leveling up abilities. Many players still make the mistake of clicking on their abilities to level them up. If you're one of those players, you may think you're fast at doing this, but the reality is that it's wildly inefficient compared to keybinding and it prevents you from doing anything clutch as you level up in game. What you'll want to do instead is level up your skills by holding control and then the skill you're leveling up, so there's no clicking involved. This is the default setting and you can change that in the keybinds if you wish. But there's also a crazy tip that you'll need this keybind to pull off. Something interesting about how ability level ups work is that while your projectile is in the air, it can still be leveled up for more damage. Let's show you what we mean. Notice how Victor with 3 points in E does 135 damage to Lissandra. When Victor hits level 7, he doesn't immediately level E. Instead, he waits to cast his E, then levels it up mid-air for more damage. The beauty of this is that you're using the mana cost of the lower ranked ability while getting the damage of the higher cost ability. As long as you level up your ability before it deals damage to your opponent, then this trick will work. The best players in the world like Faker definitely use this all the time, since if you do it consistently throughout the lane phase, then you can save a decent amount of mana, which may come in clutch later. Real quick before we get into the next one, we wanted to make sure that you all know where this guide comes from. Skill capped. It's the best place to improve at League of Legends, and you don't need to take our word for it. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using skill capped, you can claim a full refund. We offer this since our service really does work. With over 1400 guides, a direct pro coaching service, and hundreds of live smurf commentaries, you'll find all the answers you need to get your ranked climb started on the right foot this season. Check us out after this! Alright, next up we have the stop command. The stop command will stop your character from both attacking and moving. That likely doesn't sound too valuable, but it's a much bigger deal than you may be thinking. When your character auto attacks, it sends out a missile which takes time to travel to your target. This matters when last hitting. The skill involved for last hitting is of course timing your attack to be the final hit it takes to kill a minion in order to collect the gold. What players don't realize is that the further away you are from a last hit, the longer your attack takes to hit the minion, making the last hit more difficult to time. A trick you can do with stop command is get really close to minions, then spam auto and stop command. When it looks like your next auto will get the last hit, you can stop pressing the stop command and let the auto go off. There's no travel time this way and makes last hitting minions much easier when you get the opportunity to use this tactic. Stop command is by default keybound to the letter S, which we recommend keeping since it's already in a natural position. The next thing you'll want to do is to enable quick casting with all your abilities. If you haven't already, then we'd recommend you immediately stop normal casting and just rip off the band-aid once and for all. The problem with normal casting is that everything you do is so much slower compared to quick casting. Having to press your ability and then click for it to go off is just way too inefficient compared to just having to press once. If you're having issues dealing with the lack of indicator for your spell's range, then a compromise you could make is turning on quick cast with indicator. What this does is enable quick casting, but your ability will still show an indicator up until you release the key and then it'll go off. This is definitely still slower than quick casting, and like we said, you should probably just adapt and get comfortable with it. That being said, there are benefits to normal casting, which you don't want to give up. 
Knowing the absolute max range of your abilities can sometimes be important, so what you'll want is to separate binds for both quick and normal casting so you can always use what you need. Most players just do Shift, Q, W, E, and R for their normal casting binds. Another benefit of normal casting is being able to see just how much area your ability will cover, which is particularly useful for farming minions. For example, let's say you're playing Lux. To wave clear optimally on her, you want a normal caster E so you can easily set it up to hit the entire wave to maximize the damage she does with it. But quick casting doesn't just apply to these spells. You can significantly use these techniques to also improve your ward placements. A shocking number of players use either smart cast for wards or normal cast for wards. This is wrong since if you are normal casting wards, you'll be too slow to get brush vision while fighting and be really slow and clunky on champions that need to use ward hop in their kit. And on the flip side, if you use smart cast for wards, you'll not be able to use some of the most important ward placements in the game, which will certainly cost you games. Here's an example we see countless times. Players will ward this brush, which doesn't give complete vision to the enemy jungle entrance, and they can walk right through it and gank you. To deal with this, you need to place your ward right on the edge of the brush, something that wouldn't be possible without normal cast. You can also do crazy cheese wards on certain champions like this one, and so much more with normal casted wards that need precise accuracy. We have an entire course on our website with all the best wards you can do if you want to learn more about those as well. Alright, now that we've covered mechanics, we're going to move on to some must-have settings to drastically improve your awareness. And be sure to stick around because we have arguably the most important setting of them all, which almost no one uses, which we will be revealing soon. All right, let's move into some other settings that should help increase your awareness instantly. A setting we often see players leave on, which is terrible to use, is move camera on revive. You want to disable that as quickly as possible. You shouldn't need to see your champion spawn, since there's already a very clear visual cue indicating when you've come back to life as your screen goes from gray back to normal. The terrible part about this setting is that it moves your camera away from whatever you were watching before. This can be particularly annoying when running stuff like teleport or other global abilities, since you won't be able to spam them as you're spawning. Next up, you'll want to go to the minimap scale in the interface section. You want to turn the map size up to around two-thirds of the max. You can't make the correct decisions in game without information on where everyone is on the map, and this should help you see everything a bit more clearly. You may wonder why not go all the way then? Well, completely maxing the size just takes up way too much of the screen. Sure, your map awareness will be crazy high, but you might miss some important things going on in the bottom right of your screen if you do so. 50% to two thirds of the bar is definitely a good middle ground for your map size, and is what most competitive players run from what we've observed. The next thing you'll want to do is stay in the interface section and scroll down to chat and turn on timestamps. All this does is put a time to whenever something is pinged or set in the chat. This setting is most used for timing enemy flashes. If you see your opponent use their flash, ping it, and that way you can time the cooldown of it by simply adding 5 minutes to the timer. Twisted Fate having timed both Akali and Malphite's flashes can now look to punish them severely. He can now repeatedly gank Malphite again and again with the knowledge that the Big Rock won't have his flash up until 9 minutes and 55 seconds into the game. Instead of having to remember that information, he can very clearly remember it and display it to his teammates so everyone is on the same page. It can even come in clutch in 1v1 situations. Remember how Akali's flash is at 9 minutes and 45 seconds? Well, thanks to his precise timings, Twisted Fate knows he has exactly 5 seconds left where he can punish her lack of flash and uses it to score yet another easy kill. And if you really want to be efficient with this, you'll need to know this chatting tip. When you time your opponent's summoner spells, press Ctrl A to highlight and then Ctrl C to copy. Now you can Ctrl V to paste that whenever you want to remind yourself of their flash timers or to convey the timers to your teammates. Speaking of ganks, you should also set up a hotkey for the warded ping. This isn't enabled by default, so you'll want to go to your hotkeys tab, scroll down to communication, and set the area is warded ping to anything you want. Instead of having to ping regularly and then type warded, you can now just use the ping to easily communicate with your junglers where they can gank from. Not only that, but regular pings aren't tracked in the chat, while the warded ping most definitely is. Combine it with the timestamp setting and you can actually keep track of how long your opponent's ward is going to be alive with some quick math. To make things simple, wards last around 100 seconds in the early game. If you see the enemy ward, ping it, then do the mental math for the exact timing if you want to. Those 12 years of math class are finally paying off! 
Next up, you'll want to take care of your sound settings. This is an afterthought for most players, but many studies have been done that prove your auditory reaction time is actually superior to your visual reaction time. In League, we use a lot of auditory cues, such as when the enemy is casting an ability. For this reason, we recommend getting rid of all the unnecessary sounds that will only distract you. This means muting music, voice, and ambient volume. This way, you can accurately distinguish when the enemy is casting an ability on you and react sooner. On the same trend of making things clearer, you can also change the enemy summoner names to the name of their champion. This helps immediately identify who the enemy champion is, which is nice when new skins are coming out all the time, making things confusing, especially if you're newer to the game. To do this, go to the interface and scroll down. Under names above health bar, change it to show champion names. Continuing under interface, scroll down to abilities and attack display. There, you want to enable show spell costs. This is extremely vital to have on, particularly for mana users. If you're decent at math, you should be able to calculate exactly how much mana you need at all times to cast your combos. Don't hurt your brain trying to remember how much each spell costs at every rank in the game. Just turn this on and make your life infinitely easier. Also under interface, scroll back up a bit and enable champion highlight on center. All this does is highlight your champion when you recenter the camera on yourself. The setting is mostly useful in chaotic teamfights to make sure you know exactly where you're standing, even with a billion flashy lights going on all around you. Next, you want to scroll down to minimap and enable it to show neutral camps. We're not sure why this is sometimes disabled for people considering how important it is. It just shows you all the jungle camps and objectives on the map and when they're spawning. It's literally one of the most important settings to have in the game. And the penultimate setting for this guide, continue an interface to find ability cooldown display. Just make sure it's on minutes and seconds instead of anything else. We've had you do way too much math already, so this setting is just for making life easier by helping track your long cooldowns without hurting your brain. And now, finally, the setting we mentioned earlier that's arguably the most important of them all, muting the enemy and your teammates. There's a few levels to this that you'll want to consider. First is disabling all chat. There's no competitive advantage to reading what your opponents type, so disabling it in settings is a good idea to prevent any possible mental advantage your opponent could gain by trying to tilt you. You can also just use the full mute all command to get rid of all chat functions in the game. While communication can be important, if you find that more often than not you're getting tilted from your own teammates, then it's probably best to just mute them. This is especially useful for junglers as they're the most flamed role by far. You could also consider disabling team chat and settings as well, so you don't even have to think about muting your team as you go into each game. We've seen a lot of evidence of this making League so much more enjoyable for our subscribers, so definitely consider doing this. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this guide, be sure to hit subscribe and check out our website for much, much more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.